Good afternoon, everyone. Oh. Yep. Goodness gracious. Good afternoon, everyone. Ben here, and uh, welcome to President of the United States. We're going to ignore those bloopers. Um, we're covering James Madison today, uh, Democrat Republican from state of Virginia. So, and just a few life facts about him. He was born in 1751 and he died in 1836. <clears throat> he had no children of his own, but he had one stepson uh, from his wife. He was educated in Princeton. And his home is Montpelier, which is in Orange, Virginia. Uh, not Montpelier, Vermont. Um, his presidency was from 1809 to 1816. And, of course, he's from the state of Virginia. He was born in the state when it was still a colony. Uh, his life, he was the oldest of 12 children. Uh, and he had six siblings who lived to adulthood. Um... He was somewhat sickly as a child, so instead of attending William and Mary, uh, like most Virginians, he instead attended and graduated from Princeton. And he was extremely well gifted with languages, including ancient Greek, Latin, he knew French and Hebrew, and more than likely a few others, and this doesn't even include his native tongue of English. <clears throat> He went straight into politics instead of law because he graduated right around the time, uh, he graduated college right around the time uh, the revolution was flaring up. And he joined the Virginia militia in the revolution, but due to his short stature at 5'4 and his less than uh, great health, uh, he instead ran and was elected to the Virginia House of Delegates, uh, where he helped draft the original Virginia Constitution uh, with the help of George Mason and Patrick Henry, as well as the rest of the House of Delegates. Um, he was elected to the Congress of Confederation, which was part of the, which was the governing body of the Articles of Confederation. Uh, he worked to become an expert on financial issues in order to deal with the national and state debts, runaway inflation, and f issues with uh, the militias and the army and all that. <laughs> uh, he was heavily in favor of religious freedom, arguing many times for it to be adopted. Um, he is known as the father of the Constitution, um, and he kept meticulous notes on the convention. Um, I've read them. They are very good and very well kept. Um, and he is well regard. He was well regarded by uh, the other members of the convention, which included, of course, George Washington, uh, Benjamin Franklin, and a bunch of others. Um, proposed with the help of George Mason and Edmund Randolph, what is now known as the Virginia Plan and is the base of the of what we now know is the federal government um, you know three branches two chambers in the legislature a judicial and executive branch uh, at least one of the chambers I believe he wanted both um, according to population but uh, eventually that didn't happen but whatever um, he was one of the members of the Federalist Papers, along with Alexander Hamilton and John Jay. Uh, he authored some of the ones that are commonly cited. Now, personally, I'm not a fan of the Federalist. Um, I am more a fan of the Anti-Federalist, um, which was the opposition. But, okay, I understand it. Um... <laughs> And I respect the work that they did. His election to Congress. Okay, so unlike most super prominent uh, statesmen from the Constitutional Convention and from the Revolutionary Period, Madison was actually prevented from becoming a senator and he was never appointed to the first cabinet or any uh, foreign minister positions. He was actually elected to Congress to the House of Representatives 
Um, because, and remember, back in this time, there was no direct election of senators, so the state legislatures picked who would be senators. And, of course, it, the Virginia House of Delegates was run by Patrick Henry, and he blocked Madison from becoming a senator. So he ran for Congress. Patrick Henry then decided to block uh, Madison from being elected to Congress. Um, so he redrew, he essentially he gerrymandered the districts uh, to prevent Madison from winning his election. Madison then uh, promised he would support the passage of a Bill of Rights, a series of constitutional amendments to protect liberties, uh, to protect individual liberties for the Constitution. And this gamble paid off and he defeated James Monroe in the election with 57% of the vote. So a pretty strong, uh, <laughs> uh, pretty strong margin. He helped found the De Democrat-Republican Party with uh, anti-federalists, anti-Hamiltonians, anti and a lot of the more agrarian congressmen, senators, and politicians. This party selected Thomas Jefferson to run for president in 1796 and 1800. He was appointed Secretary of State during the Jefferson presidency, and he helped author the treaty allowing the purchase of Louisiana. Yeah, he helped purchase Louisiana for $10 million. And he won the election of 1800 fairly... 1808, not 1800, sorry about that. He won the election of 1808 fairly easily, but 1812 was much closer due to fears of war. The nation was split between hawks and doves at the time, uh, with hawks wanting war and doves not caring for it. And that's kind of the start of his presidency. And the War of 1812 is the most notable thing about Madison's presidency. Uh, he attempted to invade Quebec, um, hoping that the French... Uh, the French Canadians would be copacetic to joining the United States because they were supposedly looked down upon by the Brits, though this is less and less true, but whatever. Uh, the White House was burned during his presidency, <clears throat> though Dolly Madison saved a bunch of uh, portraits and paintings and books and stuff that were important. <clears throat> eventually both the English and the Brits uh, just they just got tired of the war and even though America technically won um, it was truly just a draw though we can always argue we technically won so eh. um, the last battle he sent Andrew Jackson to defend the city of New Orleans and this also happened after the Brits first offered to surrender. Um, and Jackson, and there was a battle there in New Orleans, which was pretty cool. Um, and this was at the very end of the war and at the very end of Madison's presidency. Uh, he ensured the expiration of the first bank of the United States of America, which is kind of a forerunner, of an ancestor to the Federal Reserve that we have today. Um, and that's the thing, Democrat Republicans hated the idea of a national bank. Uh, his retirement was pretty dull compared to most presidents. He retired to his plantation, helped Jefferson found the University of Virginia. Uh, he helped the American Colonization Society, which eventually was instrumental in creating the nation of Liberia with uh, resettled former slaves. Um, uh, he was left financially on rocky ground due to his presidency um, for many reasons, including the decline of the price of tobacco and due to his stepson's mismanagement. Uh, he really didn't do much. He was invited uh, to another constitutional convention for the state of Virginia in which he tried to fix a few issues um, that he was unable to for whatever reason. I guess they just didn't want to follow his plan. Um, Jack, 
He helped advise Andrew Jackson during some of his presidency, um, and he tried to help Quincy Adams and a few others. Um, he kept correspondence with Jefferson and Adams and other people. And I actually have a book uh, discussing some of his core, uh, discussing some of his correspondence, and it's a good book. Uh, it's called Madison's Gift. If you are able to find it and read it. It's a great book. It really is. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.